On Saturday, May the 6th, 2021, the Colonial Pipeline Company released a statement reporting that their network had been attacked by ransomware, particularly the part of their network which operates a 5,500 mile gas pipeline from Texas to New Jersey. In an effort to contain the threat, Colonial was forced to shut down parts of the pipeline in what is turning out to be one of the largest disruptions of American infrastructure by hackers in history. So how did this happen? What is ransomware? And who is behind this attack? Let's dig into it. Hey, I'm Rob Witcher. In this video series, we explore some of the biggest cybersecurity breaches in modern history. If you find cybersecurity as fascinating as I do, then please subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notifications when we release new videos. Remember when we were all in lockdown and people were panic buying toilet paper and getting into fist fights at the checkout over the last roll? Well, it seems old habits die hard, as for almost a week now, panicked Americans have formed queues at their local gas stations, desperate to get the last few gallons before supplies run dry. Well, unless you've been living under a rock, which is an entirely understandable life choice, you would have heard that the Colonial Pipeline System, the fuel network that connects the US Gulf Coast, where a ton of fuel is produced and delivered to the US East Coast, where a ton of fuel is consumed, has effectively stopped pumping fuel. These pipelines, which supply over half of the gasoline, diesel, and jet fuel, were rendered offline following a ransomware attack. Concerned members of the public began panic buying and stockpiling fuel in all manner of makeshift storage containers, including dangerous transport methods like open tubs, tarps in the backs of flatbed pickup trucks, and bizarrely, trunkfuls of doubled up plastic bags leaking everywhere like doubling up the plastic bags is gonna help with a bag full of fuel. How there hasn't been a fiery inferno yet is beyond belief. So here's what we know so far about the ransomware attack. Thursday, May 6th, unbeknownst to Colonial Pipelines, cyber criminals had gained access to their networks and were in the midst of installing malware. Friday, May 7th, Colonial Pipeline learned that it was the target of a vicious ransomware attack. They immediately notified relevant government authorities, including the FBI and the US Department of Energy, who immediately began working with the company to hastily find a solution to what was bound to be a very big problem. To prevent additional systems from becoming infected, Colonial made the hard decision to take certain systems offline in an attempt to contain the threat and prevent the spread to more systems and wider networks. The systems that were infected with ransomware controlled pipeline operations and some of their internal and external IT systems. Colonial has engaged the services of FireEye, a company that specializes in preventing cyber attacks and how to mitigate their effects after the fact. Saturday, May 8th, Colonial Pipelines confirmed that in addition to ransomware effectively locking them out of their systems due to uncrackable encryption, the criminal group also stole over 100 gigabytes of data from company servers. All four major pipelines would remain offline until further notice, with a restart plan in place to slowly bring lateral and secondary lines back online that link terminals to delivery points in an effort to resume fuel supply. There was no mention of when regular service would resume. Sunday, May 9th. The company has been frantically trying to repair its systems with no luck thus far. Gas stations had now begun to run dry, with a ridiculous volume of fuel purchased over the previous two days by members of the public, frightened that fuel stores would eventually run out and they would be stranded in their homes. It was estimated that a whopping 7% of gas stations in Virginia alone would effectively run out of fuel by the following day. President Joe Biden addressed the media and was asked, if you can't protect critical infrastructure from a criminal actor, then how can you possibly protect it from a state actor? To which Biden replied, we can do both and we will. When asked directly if he thought Russia was involved at all, Biden responded that he would be conducting a video meeting with President Vladimir Putin, and that at this stage, there is no intelligence that points to the Russian government's involvement in this attack. He went on to say that the ransomware attackers are likely operating from within Russia itself, and as such, Russia has some responsibility to help deal with this crisis. The Department of Energy stepped in to provide any assistance required in order to get colonial systems back up and running as cleanly and safely as possible. Monday, May 10th, after being engaged to investigate and identify the foreign actors behind the cyber attack, the FBI confirmed that it was, in fact, a criminal act by notorious apolitical hacker group, Darkside, using their own in-house brand of ransomware. The FBI released these details in a statement with the intention of warning other large businesses that they might be the next target in this campaign of online carnage. 
the major pipeline systems were still being repaired, with the goal of substantially restoring the majority of fuel services to the US East Coast, hopefully by the end of the week. Tuesday, May 11th. The fuel shortage is now so bad in such a short space of time that oil traders have begun making arrangements to have fuel shipped over from Europe on tankers. Federal officials made the incredulous move to waive rules on how many hours straight tanker truck drivers can safely work and waived the minimum stand down times between shifts just to make sure that the tanker trucks that were moving the fuel in place of the pipeline kept rolling. Colonial Pipelines confirmed that a fleet of additional tanker trucks would cart fuel from storage reservoirs across the country thanks to these temporary relaxed laws and restrictions. They also reported that major pipeline number four is now able to operate manually for a limited period of time. Afraid that desperate citizens might take to helping themselves directly from the source, Colonial deployed an additional 50 guards to walk and drive along the 5,500 mile stretch of pipeline each day to protect it from vandalism and damage from would-be thieves looking to take advantage of the situation. Wednesday, May 12th. Colonial Pipelines revealed that they had delivered 967,000 barrels of fuel equal to approximately 41 million gallons to various major delivery points along their pipeline route in Atlanta, Belton, Charlotte, Greensboro, Baltimore, and many other since the four major pipelines had been offline. They further went on to announce that they had taken delivery of a further 2 million barrels, totaling 84 million gallons, to cope with the expected boost of supply once the major pipelines were back up and running. At this point, the pipelines had been halted since late Friday, over five days, with the US East Coast losing 1.2 million barrels of gasoline supply per day from the disruption. The US Congress is expected to meet with the Department of Homeland Security to discuss the changes that need to be made to prevent further attacks. As you would expect, this situation is evolving quickly, and there's not much to go on yet. Colonial Pipelines is tight-lipped about the details involving the attack, and the FBI and government are even more unforthcoming with information, instead releasing dribs and drabs in daily statements to the media and public. At this time, no government officials have given Colonial Pipelines any advice as to whether they should or shouldn't pay the ransom demanded in order to resume daily operations. The ransom amount is unknown, as are the other demands set out by Darkseid. How the ransomware got into Colonial Pipeline systems, what their defenses looked like, and the security protocols they had in place are also currently unknown. The only confirmation so far has been that Darkseid is responsible and they were able to cripple a major US infrastructure from halfway across the world in Eastern Europe. The Russian government has long been suspected of turning a blind eye to cybercrime emanating from within its borders. And some have even gone to the extent to suggest that it actively encourages the practice as a way to weaken the defenses of rival nations. Put simply, Russia is a relatively safe haven for black hat criminals. Darkseid is a ransomware group that operates more like a business and less like a group of evil super nerds that is looking to take revenge on big companies. Revenge! Darkseid is all about the money and not so much about causing chaos and disruption as a result of their actions. In their own words, they are apolitical, choosing not to participate in geopolitics and they are unbound to any particular foreign government influencing their motives, so they say. From Darkseid's perspective, the fault and blame lie with their victims. They're a true grey hat hacking group who cripple systems for monetary gain, but also to expose vulnerabilities, often sharing how they snuck into a system and how to prevent it from happening again with their targets. In their eyes, a company's cybersecurity should be so good that a breach is near impossible. The fact that it isn't puts their customer sensitive information at risk of theft by other black hats, who would then sell information to the highest bidder. Darkseid has a reputation of honoring payments, decrypting following an untraceable cryptocurrency payment. However, it also has leaked information online in an attempt to discredit some of the group's victims. The structure of Darkseid is fairly uncommon amongst cyber criminals. The group consists of two parts, the executors who perform the extortion and the coders who write and produce the ransomware through an endless cycle of research and development. It's a similar structure to any company. You have the salesman and you have the technical staff producing and refining the product line. Darkseid essentially has an affiliate network. They allow other cyber criminals to use their ransomware to perpetrate ransomware attacks. And then the proceeds are shared between these other hackers and the Darkseid group. 
And some of the profit is reinvested back into making ransomware more effective and untraceable for the next attack. Darkseid have a bit of a Robin Hood policy of not targeting things like hospitals, funeral homes, places of education, not-for-profit organizations, the government sector, and anything that would disrupt the day-to-day -day lives of regular citizens. Makes you kind of wonder what their decision process was to target colonial pipelines. Sometimes the Darkseid group will even donate a portion of their proceeds to charity, though most charities will turn down the backhanded gifts. Darkseid is very selective when choosing a target, only attacking companies who are worth so much that the ransom fee is a pittance. It's actually a pretty simple concept. Whether through an initial social engineering attack or exploiting a weakness in a system, the malicious ransomware software is installed on a system, and then waits for a signal to begin doing what it does best, encrypting every file it can find. What happens is that all the information stored on a laptop, desktop, server, etc. becomes unreadable to the owner. The ransomware does this by using an encryption algorithm like AES or RSA to encrypt every file it can. And of course, only the bad guys have the encryption key required to decrypt and read the files. Once the ransomware has encrypted everything, it then displays an extortion message on the user's screen. A fee is demanded, usually in Bitcoin. And in return, the hackers promise to deliver the encryption key needed to decrypt everything. Generally, there is a threat of this fee doubling if a payment is not made by a certain deadline, just to expedite the payment process. As proof that they have the key, hackers will often decrypt a few files to show that they can, as well as offering support in deploying the decryption key following the payment to ensure the safe restoration of all the encrypted files. This is a business. They want to make sure that people pay. Darkseid have released a statement on the dark web expressing regret that their affiliate group had caused such widespread chaos. They want to make money, not problems. They've promised to exercise a stricter vetting policy when approving which companies their affiliated groups want to target in an effort to mitigate the social consequences experienced by the wider community. This points to Darkseid's selling their ransomware as a service and hinting that they had not personally been behind this latest attack on colonial pipelines. They likely allowed an affiliate group to use their ransomware in exchange for a share of the ransom. The code that Darkseid uses is eerily similar to that used by the original ransomware developers, Revel. They were hackers for hire and the first to offer ransomware as a service and hold their victim systems hostage for a princely sum. Darkseid is likely an offshoot of this group who decide to go into business for themselves. As more information becomes available, we'll be creating a part two of this video that delves into the truly technical details of how an attack that crippled half of the US's fuel supply was carried out. There are updates coming thick and fast every day. So make sure you stay tuned and we'll keep you posted. If you found this video interesting and informative, then please hit the thumbs up button so we know you like this sort of content. And let us know in the comments below what breaches you want us to cover in future videos. See you in the next one.